Good morning, YouTube. It is I, Darth Cobain 17, once more, and uh, uh, I come to you on this Tuesday morning after our uh, long Thanksgiving weekend up here in Canada. And uh, what I'm not giving thanks for is the fact that these guys ended up getting swept yesterday and are now out of the playoffs. So, um, yes, a uh, season I was very excited for that went very well for the tribe uh, ended in complete disaster. So, but uh, given the sports teams that I follow, it's it's not something I'm unused to. So it's just another year. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, like I said, it was uh, our Thanksgiving long weekend this uh, weekend and I am so full of food and stuff that uh, I can barely think about what I'm talking about right now so uh, forgive any errors in this uh, video but uh, this is just one of my regular videos because I, I recently finished uh, a few more things first one is this a uh, series of books I've been working on the complete aliens omnibus um, this one is volume 5 I believe yeah um, uh, this one contains two short stories I mean the, the book is 600 pages long so it's not it's not uh, it's not um, the tiniest of volumes but uh, the first story um, actually follows some established characters, including Ripley's clone that shares the alien DNA, um, who we saw in the fourth Aliens movie, Alien Resurrection. Um, it, it picks up as her and some of her crew friends, I guess, from that movie, um, including John or Call, the android, um, Crack, Vries, uh, Rama, and maybe there's one more I'm missing, but they're out in their ship, the Betty, and they're kind of going to these various space stations around the galaxy and causing distractions while Ripley and Call go in and download data from these stations. And uh, what we learn thereafter is they, they know Wayland yutani and the government, they know they're in on this um, xenomorph weaponizing scheme, which is just a disaster waiting to happen as we all know um, and she wants to put a stop to it so they download all this data and, and they get basically are aware of what the plans are with the xenomorphs where they're going to be striking and what they're doing with these things so um, while they're doing that it kind of cuts scene to this uh, botany colony this peaceful place where they grow plants out in deep space and uh, they get a uh, one of their regular shipments comes in with supplies and stuff and in this shipment is an alien egg um, the face hugger quickly latches on to the first person it comes into contact with and soon enough they have an alien uh, running around their complex and uh, this plan to infect this botany colony was one of the nuggets of information that Ripley and and crew downloaded so they go there to hopefully just deal with one single tiny alien after it's born or before it's born and uh, and be on their way and uh, foil that plan but uh, they get there too late they've got aliens on their hands and uh, yeah they're in another fight for their life so um, that was the first story um, which was called original sin the second story was called DNA war and this takes uh, brand new characters and it was actually a really neat story I really like this one um, this guy named um, Rory um, Rory Malvo, I think his name was. Um, he's a police officer on Earth, and he joins this expedition to go to this planet called called Rosamund Six, I think it was, um, which is a very unique planet because it uh, it is just like Earth. It's got um, water supply, breathable atmosphere, and it's got a moon that stabilizes its orbit and its tides and its seasons and all that stuff. So it's basically immediately habitable by the human race, which in this day and age of the aliens universe um, mankind is looking to expand and they've got earth as a cesspool they need to expand and make room and, and, and branch out into the galaxy so this planet is immensely valuable the only problem is it's got an alien infestation so um, Rory goes there with this team uh, which he knows the Captain Clark is one of his friends so they go there with these poison packer robots which are uh, programmed to eliminate anything entirely alien to that planet um, so anything that shouldn't be there is going to be eliminated by these things including the xenomorphs um, the only problem is Rory's own mother who is a renowned scientist named Jocasta uh, Malvo is on the planet with a team of researchers living in hiding and observing the xenomorphs behavior yada yada doing research and uh, he's got to get them off so that they can release these robots and cleanse the planet. Um, the only problem is his mom's batshit crazy and thinks that she's going to be able to live with these fiends um, and and interact with them and, and be able to walk among them and uh, 
And as, as he observes the behavior of this research colony, he realizes that something is way, way off. Um, and uh, people start dropping like flies. And uh, again, it's another race for your life to get off this planet. So um, two really good stories, especially that second one I really enjoyed. And, uh, and I've actually got volume six waiting to go. Um, so they just keep coming and I keep reading them. <laughs> Uh, the next thing I finished was this. I found this for $5 down at Game Cycle. It's called Star Fox Guard. Um, I never got into the Star Fox series. It just didn't appeal to me. But this one is like a tower defense kind of game, which I don't play often, but every once in a while I like to pick one up because I do enjoy that style of game from time to time. Um, it turns out this one was actually really awesome. Um, I don't know the characters from Star Fox, but basically this guy named Grippy Toad and his nephew Slippy Toad um, he, he owns this precious metal mining corporation called Cornerian Precious Metals. And uh, the only problem is his operations are being raided by these robots and, and, and everything's being disrupted and destroyed. So you come on as this kind of new safety security recruit and uh, you have to take control of these remote cameras around his bases and uh, eliminate the robots as they make their way in and uh, de defeat different types of robots, different uh, various waves and different challenges, you know, uh, across all these different planets where he's got these operations. And uh, it gets a little harder and harder and harder with each uh, world that goes along. Most of them have a boss at the end, a big behemoth robot that you have to destroy. And in the end, the whole storyline revolves around this rival mining guy that they know and, and and he's the one causing all this disruption so then you have to eliminate him in the end um i was for five bucks i thought you know i may as well i like that style of game but it ended up being an awesome game it was worth way more than i paid for it so so that was nice uh and then the last thing um another one i got a game cycle used wario land shake it um i never got into the wario games as i was younger i loved all the marios and played all them uh, but Wario kind of was never really on my radar up until recently. I, I got a Game Boy Advance game, which was really good. Um, and then when I saw this, I was like, yeah, let's let's go for it. And so the, the, the story around this one is that um, we see this female uh, kind of uh, adventurer break into a museum and steal this kind of globe. Um, and inside this globe, it actually contains its own kind of world um, called the Shake Kingdom or something like that. Um, and it, within this world, uh, the Shake King has taken um, the princess um, captive. Um, these the species that live there are called the Murfles, and uh, and he's basically you know ru ru ruling this um, kingdom with a heavy hand. And so Captain Syrup um, mails the globe to Wario, and uh, says that the treasure is inside. So then he goes in to the Shake Kingdom and then has to battle through all these levels and stuff like that and he's promised by the by the the merful contact he talks to there this uh treasure called the endless coin sack so it's just a sack that just spews coins endlessly and we all know wario loves his treasure right um so then you have to battle through five worlds uh, i think there's at least six levels in each world including a boss and uh and many secret levels you can access along the way as well and uh, you gain as much treasure as you can, you defeat all the enemies, and at the end of each level you rescue a Murphle, bring them back to the start, and that's how you beat the level. Um, yeah, so if you can uh, defeat all five uh, worlds and then defeat the Shake King, you have won the game. And uh, it was an excellent game, and it makes use of the Wii's uh, motion controls. You shake the controller to make him ground pound and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a really good game. I was really happy with it. It was a bit more money because the Mario, Wario, Donkey Kongs, all that, they always hold their value better than a lot of other games. Um, so I did pay a bit more for it than I wanted to, but um, just like the Star Fox game, it was well worth you know the price that I paid. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's all for now. Uh, I'm sure I will have a few more things to talk about in the near future. And until then, uh, you'll be seeing a bunch of other different videos. Bye-bye.